Hey there, everyone. I am Kenny. Happy New Year. It's a busy year ahead for me as my company is juggling multiple exciting projects. But guess what? We're about to launch an amazing project on virtual reality. But before we dive into that, I want to address some of the requests from my awesome viewers. Some of you are interested in hearing about the development of ancient Chinese technology in mathematics, while others want to explore famous quotes from ancient China. Fear not, my friends. I promise to cover those topics in future videos. However, I made a promise to one particular viewer to create a video about the downfall of dynasties. So, today, let's delve into the reasons behind the collapse of the Eastern Han Dynasty. Get ready for an intriguing journey into history. Let's dive right in. Alright, folks, buckle up for a wild ride through the calamitous world of the Eastern Han Dynasty. We all know about the power struggles and the infamous Yellow Turban Rebellion, but there's one important factor that often gets overlooked. Good old Mother Nature and her frequent tantrums. For almost two centuries, from the late 90s of the first century to the second century, the Eastern Han Dynasty was like a magnet for natural disasters. We're talking floods, droughts, locust infestations, earthquakes, and even infectious diseases. It was like living in a never-ending episode of Disaster of the Day. Let's start with Emperor and of Han, who ruled from 106 to 125. During his 20-year reign, it seemed like he angered every deity in the celestial realm. Floods, droughts, earthquakes, you name it, they had it. The Eastern Han Dynasty had double the trouble in terms of natural disasters compared to its predecessor, the Western Han Dynasty. Seriously, think about it, in a time with limited scientific advancements and technological know-how, who could withstand such a relentless onslaught of natural calamities? It's like trying to juggle flaming swords while riding a unicycle on a tightrope. But wait, there's more. The Eastern Han Dynasty had a date with disaster every two to three years on average. That's like playing a twisted game of, what kind of catastrophe is coming next? In the 195 years of the dynasty's history, a whopping 119 years were marred by natural disasters. That's 61% of their existence. It's like the universe was playing a prank on them, saying, hey, you want stability? Here have some floods and locusts instead. Now, let's take a little trip back in time to the years between 110 and 115. During this five-year stretch, the Eastern Han Dynasty experienced severe locust infestations every single year. It was like the locusts had a recurring reservation on the empire's menu. Can you imagine the farmers' despair? Planting their crops, only to have them devoured by these hungry invaders. It was a never-ending battle of farmer versus locust, and the locusts were winning by a landslide. But wait, there's more. The Eastern Han Dynasty didn't just have to deal with locusts. They also had their fair share of earthquakes and epidemics. Emperor Ling of Han, bless his heart, had a rough time during his 21-year reign. He experienced not one, not two, but seven earthquakes. It was like the ground beneath them couldn't stop shaking. And as if that wasn't enough, they had to deal with five major epidemics as well. Talk about a double whammy. The timeline of these epidemics is a roller coaster of sickness. We're talking outbreaks in the years 171, 173, 179, 182, and 185. It was like clockwork with an epidemic popping up every two to three years. It's almost as if the empire had a standing appointment with illness. Now, imagine these natural disasters happening alongside the political instability caused by the rise of eunuchs and powerful families, the infamous corruption and intrigue of the court, and invasions from neighboring tribes. 
It was like a perfect storm of chaos, both man-made and nature-made, that seriously hammered the foundation of the Eastern Han Empire. So, what made the Eastern Han Dynasty, especially its later years, a hotbed of natural disasters? Buckle up, because here are the main reasons behind the calamitous events that plagued the empire. First of all, the Eastern Han Dynasty was like a buffet for Mother Nature's mischievous creations. They had it all. Floods, droughts, locust swarms, epidemics, earthquakes, you name it, they had it on their disaster platter. But it wasn't just the variety of disasters that made the Eastern Han Dynasty unique. It was their frequency and scope that really set them apart. These disasters had a habit of occurring in rapid succession, sometimes even within the same year or short period. It was like a domino effect of calamities, with droughts, floods, and earthquakes all joining forces to wreak havoc. The impact was widespread, reaching multiple provinces and counties. Talk about a disaster extravaganza. But what caused all of this chaos? Well, some scholars believe that the Eastern Han Dynasty, especially its later years, coincided with a period of heightened geological activity and climate changes. It was like the Earth itself was throwing a temper tantrum. The seismic activity was off the charts, and the climate was experiencing unusual shifts. Mother Nature was in a mood, and she wanted everyone to know it. Now, we're diving into the wild world of how natural disasters led to a never-ending cycle of rebellions in the Eastern Han Dynasty. Brace yourselves, because it's about to get rebellious up in here. So, picture this. Frequent disasters strike, and the population takes a big hit. With each disaster, people lose their lives, homes, and livelihoods. It's like a never-ending saga of misfortune. The population decline becomes one of the main reasons for the dwindling empire in the later years of the Eastern Han Dynasty. And you know what happens when the population shrinks? Tax revenues take a nosedive. As if that wasn't bad enough, the government has to spend a fortune on disaster relief. It's like a financial seesaw that seriously weakens the empire's fiscal and national strength. But wait, there's more. The constant barrage of disasters doesn't just leave people homeless and destitute. It also throws society into a chaotic frenzy. Those who miraculously survive are left scrambling just to make ends meet. Some become wandering vagabonds, others turn to a life of crime, and many seek refuge under the protection of powerful clans and warlords. And guess what? A good chunk of these folks end up joining the infamous Yellow Turbans and the private armies of local warlords. Talk about a recipe for social disorder and economic instability. Now, here's where things get really interesting. In times of desperation, people start questioning everything. They lose faith in their leaders and traditional values, and superstition starts to take hold. It's like a bad case of moral collapse. And you know what happens when people feel neglected and disillusioned. They grab their pitchforks and join rebellions, shouting slogans of justice and righteousness. It's like a rebellious revolution party, and everyone's invited. To make matters worse, there was a popular belief in ancient times that disasters and misfortunes were a result of an emperor's lack of virtue and moral conduct. So, when disaster struck during the Eastern Han Dynasty, people pointed their fingers at the emperor and his alleged misdeeds. This created a perfect storm for rebellion, with groups like the Yellow Turbans rising up against the government in the name of justice and overthrowing the powers that be. Many of us think that the main reason behind its downfall was the warlord chaos, which eventually led to the rise of the Chao family and the end of the Han dynasty. But have you ever wondered why the common folks would join rebellions out of the blue? Well, it's time to uncover the truth. The warlord chaos in the Eastern Han Dynasty can be traced back to the infamous Yellow Turban Rebellion. In order to suppress this rebellion and quell the unrest, the Eastern Han government had to decentralize its military power. But here's the catch. 
Once the military power was dispersed, local warlords started flexing their muscles and asserting their dominance. It was like a free-for-all, with everyone having their own private army. Talk about a power struggle. But why would the common people join these rebellions, you ask? Well, let's take a closer look at their everyday lives. Living conditions weren't exactly a walk in the park during that time. And you know what happens when people are faced with hardship. They become susceptible to manipulation and easily swayed by promises of change. It's like a recipe for rebellion. In fact, throughout Chinese history, there have been numerous instances where natural disasters have fueled rebellions and even led to the downfall of dynasties. Just take the Ming Dynasty as an example. When faced with frequent natural disasters, people's frustrations and grievances reached a tipping point, and they took matters into their own hands. It's like a perfect storm of discontent and opportunity. And that's a wrap, folks. That concludes our video on how natural disasters led to the downfall of the Eastern Han Dynasty. I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. Before we part ways, I have a little request for you, my awesome viewers. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support means the world to me, and it's what keeps me motivated to create more informative and entertaining videos about Chinese history, culture, and artifacts. So, if there's a specific topic you'd like me to explore, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the fascinating world of history.